Thank you for joining us today. This workshop is brought to you by the Education Fund. Welcome to the Ideas with Impact proposal writing webinar. We want to say thank you to our sponsors, Ford Motor Company, Assurant, TD Bank, FPL, School District Education Foundation Matching Grant Program, and Learning A to Z. My name is Michelle Singh and I'll be your webinar host for today. Take a look at today's agenda to see the important topics related to the disseminator stipend. In this section, we will review the general guidelines for the disseminator stipend. All Miami-Dade County public school educators working with students in any subject area is eligible to apply for the disseminator stipend. Applications are accepted for K through 12 projects in all subject areas. The Ideas with Impact assist teachers in marketing their ideas to other teachers. Teachers' ideas are highlighted in the Ideas with Impact catalog, which is sent to 22,000 teachers and principals in Miami-Dade County Public Schools and online at www.educationfund.org. Disseminators are honored at events attended by leaders from the educational and business communities. Teachers gain recognition among their colleagues and the community, and disseminators receive training and presentation skills and networking strategies. Those are just a few of the benefits of being a disseminator. Please note that approval is required from your school principal to ensure that appropriate administrative personnel are aware of your grant application submission, your disseminator stipend sub submission. It's also important to understand that the Education Fund reserves the right to publicize all grant programs and to fund programs that it considers appropriate for one school, but not for another. Teachers can access the Disseminator Stipend application at www.educationfund.org. When on the site, click What We Do, click Programs, scroll to Ideas with Impact, and then from there you can select Overview. In the Overview section is where you can find the link to the Disseminator application. And from there, you can apply. In this section of the presentation, we will review some writing tips. These writing tips come from the Education Fund Grants Committee. They recommend that teachers write their grant separately and not on the application. The grant can be written on a Word document. They also recommend that the grant is edited with other readers. After this, the grant can be entered into the online application. The next recommendation is to write in sentences except for the budget and to avoid education jargon and to not include standards. As we progress through this webinar today, I would like for you to think about these three things when you are writing your grant application. Simplify, clarify, and describe. More specifically, Please note that the grant reviewers are business professionals, which means they are not educators. You should describe in details your examples of your student activities and learning tasks and any information that you have for your grant, because this will help them visualize what the students are doing. Because the judges are not educators, education jargon should be avoided. If you must use education acronyms, for example, SPED or EP or IEP, please clarify what these acronyms mean. Remember, the overall language should be simplified 
and you are to write in complete sentences. As you are describing your project, it is very important that you sell your project so that you are standing out. One way to do that is by using rhetorical appeals. You can weave in these elements in your writing. For example, ethos or ethical appeal, you can weave this in by telling stories about what the students, who the students are and their needs all while discussing the importance of your curriculum. This will help you build credibility with the readers or the judges. In terms of logos or logical appeal, you want to tie in research and what the research says about your topic and state what the students do, what their tasks are. These are facts. These are statistics and data and quotes. These are the things that add logical appeal to your writing. For pathos or emotional appeal, this is where you can sprinkle those charged words and phrases in your description. You can use words and phrases like students deserve or innovate, motivate, inspire, challenge, empower, and crave. These vivid descriptions or this vivid language really pulls on the reader's or the judge's heartstrings. And when you're able to use all three appeals throughout your writing, you are really selling your project. In this ethos example, the teacher establishes credibility by stating what she knows about her students. In this logos example, the teacher states facts about the program that she's using with her students. In this pathos example, the teacher uses charged words like high quality, well planned, carefully trained, fail proof. In this section, we will review part one, the general info of the application. We will first start with some tips to help you get started. Now let's get started with your grant application. Think about a teaching unit lesson or idea that worked well for you and your students. Consider the following as you're thinking. Was this lesson unit or project innovative? Were your students excited? Does it make you proud? Does it make you smile? And did you save student samples? Let's dig a little bit deeper as we're thinking about these wonderful lessons. Why did the lesson unit or idea stand out? What activities did students do throughout the project? How did it impact student learning or performance? What was the goal in the beginning and did the outcome match it? What made the project innovative? And did the students use critical thinking skills and creativity? At this time, you can take a moment to write down your great ideas. Let's jump into the general information section of the application. The application asks for your name, teaching assignment, employee information, school information, and contact information. Most importantly, it asks if your principal supports the application. The second part of the application is disseminator info. Let's take a look at what you'll need for the disseminator information. In this part of the application, you're agreeing to undertaking the requirements of the Idea Expo, which includes making the instructional booklet, creating the display, and presenting a workshop at the Idea Expo. You're also explaining what the source of your idea is. When explaining the source of your idea, consider where it came from. Did it come from a website? Did it come from a teacher mini grant or other grant from the Ed Fund with your twist or reinvention? Was it from another grant source? Or was it from a teaching method or concept such as DI or PBL? Remember here, we are rewarded for not reinventing the wheel, but putting our twist on it. You may pause this slide to read this example for the source 
of the idea. We will talk about academic achievement next. This question asks how the project has benefited your students' academic achievement. Please consider these topics for impact on student academic achievement. Has your students' test scores improved? Has their attendance improved? Has there been any attitude changes in students? What about student projects? Has, has that given the students an opportunity to showcase their strengths and 21st century skills? Students are able to build on those 21st century skills, which will then prepare them for college and careers. And last but not least, FSA standards. How are students meeting the requirements of the FSA standards through the activities in this project? When you are looking at the need of your project, here are some recommendations and things to think about. How does this project align with the curriculum, pacing guides, district mandates, and state standards? Think about this. This project is a need because it will prepare students for and fill in the blank. Next, is this project interdisciplinary? Are there opportunities for students to experience other learning outside of the current content? This project is a need because it will prepare students for fill in the blank. Does this project provide authentic real life learning experiences for students? Are learning activities hands on? This project is a need because it will expose students to and you can fill in the blank there. Finally, does the project expose students to skills like the 21st century skills, which they need for college and career readiness? If it does, fill in the blank with this project is a need because it will expose students to the 21st century skills. Here you will see the scoring rubric requirement for the section on impact on student achievement. Your project will be scored on whether or not it clearly helps students succeed. Does it specify the learning standard that it meets? Consider this when writing this section of your application. Feel free to pause the upcoming slide to take a look at the example. Let's take a brief look at the budget. The application asks, what is the estimated cost for a teacher to adapt the project? Please give a low and high end estimate. For this section, consider $0 to $400. 400 is the highest for an adapter grant. The scoring rubric for the budget asks if your amount is reasonable. Will teachers be able to easily find the resources to adapt the project in their own classrooms or will a small 200 to 400 adapter grant allow the teacher to use this project? Think about the resources and materials that your project requires. Will teachers be able to duplicate the project at a low cost? At this time, feel free to pause and write down your ideas for your budget. Let's review the curriculum idea profile section of the grant. This includes the project title and curriculum areas. The grant application asks for a project title that's short, creative, and descriptive. It also asks that you list one or two areas of major focus for curriculum. You may use the following recommendations when creating your project title. Think about the requirements of it being short, creative, and descriptive. It should also grab the attention of the judges and the readers. Two examples from previous grants are the living mural and the statistics of mass shootings. You may use the following techniques when you're coming up with your project titles. You can be alliterative, use or come up with an acronym, or make your title rhyme. The scoring rubric asks if your project title is creative, if it's catchy, and does it clearly convey what the project is about? Please consider any of the following curriculum areas to include in your application. 
feel free to pause at this point in the presentation to write down your ideas related to your title and the curriculum areas. Now we will explore part three of the application, the curriculum profile. Let's get into the curriculum idea profile project description. When describing your project, do so clearly and concisely. Start with a one sentence description of the purpose of the project and then elaborate with examples of what the students do and learn and provide at least one detailed example of a classroom activity. This is what the grant asks you to do. For this part of the application, consider the following successful grant writing tips from the Education Fund Grant Committee. Describe the overall project, focus on one major example, and then go into detail. Use lots of students will do sentences. Show students solving problems and being creative, and then make it sound so interesting that the judges will want to do it too. Here are some recommendations for your project description. Think about the one sentence description that you have to write. Consider what students are doing, their actions. What are they doing in the project? Think about the student skills that are being developed in the project. Think about the classroom activities that students have to participate in. Think about outside resources that are brought into the project to make the learning experience more interactive and engaging. And also think about the learning goals and the outcome of those goals for the project. How are students meeting those goals with the activities that are being done in the project? The rubric for this section asks if the project and its purpose is clearly described and of particular importance, are there detailed examples of student activities and learning provided? At this time, feel free to pause to think about some of those ideas for your project description. You'll also see an example on the next slide. In this next part, we'll talk about the curriculum idea profile related to standards. Here you will list the Florida standards that your project addresses. You can retrieve the standards, the Florida State standards from the following website. And you can also incorporate technology standards from the following website. In this section, we'll explore how you describe the students in your project for the curriculum idea profile. The application requires that you tell how many students participate in the project, including the grade or age, level of achievement, and how often they meet. State whether or not the project can be adapted to other ages or achievement levels and or used with larger or smaller groups. Let's look a little bit deeper into the requirements for your students. How many students are there? This can be students directly in your classroom and students who are taking part in the presentation and somehow maybe your students are presenting to a larger group. How many students are impacted by your project? What's their grade level or age? What's their level of achievement? And for this, you can use their FSA levels. What's the diversity? What does that look like in your classroom? What are the needs of the students who have IEPs and EPs? State that those are students with diverse and unique needs. What's their socioeconomic status based on their free or reduced lunch status? Again, that's describing the students. And then also talk about whether or not you see the students every day or on a block schedule. You're describing the time and the, the, the time you spend with your students. The important part about this is to think about if your project can be adapted to other ages or achievement levels that has to be clear in your in your response and can the project be used with large or small groups and how can other subject areas adapt the project. Here are some other recommendations for your summary. Think about who are your students show who they really are socially emotionally and academically what is the need of your students in accordance to their learning goals to the curriculum to the standards etc why are the resources materials supplies 
required for the students and their learning. How will the project and the requested items meet the learning goals and the outcomes for students? The scoring rubric for students targeted and adaptability asks two questions. Do you describe your students in a clear way? Is it clear the types of students that will benefit from this project? Their grades, their achievement levels, etc. The second part asks about the adaptability. Given the student population, how adaptable is the project for other teachers? And consider the things we've talked about, adaptable based on age, grade level, and content. At this time, you can take a pause to write down your ideas of describing the students and the adaptability of your project. In the section of the curriculum idea profile, we'll talk about the staff. Here's where you get to shine. Give your teaching experience, mention your awards or grants that you've received and how long you've used this project and if you need assistance such as paraprofessionals or volunteers. So breaking down this section, you are describing your teaching experience. How many years have you been teaching? You're describing your awards or grants that you've received from the education fund or other means. You're describing the length of this project and whether or not you need support for this project from other teachers or staff or parents or volunteers or community members or programs. We will now move on to the materials and resources section of the curriculum idea profile. For materials, describe the space, equipment, setup that you have and the materials that you need such as books and supplies. Mention materials you have prepared for teachers interested in adapting your grant. When it comes to the space, think about your school and think about the equipment and the technology and the actual physical space that's needed for your project to take place. And when it comes to teacher materials, think about manuals that teachers may have access to or things that you've created, right? Think about websites that are giving them free resources and again, content that you've already created that you can share with them. And then for student materials, think about books and supplies and worksheets that are needed for the project. These are all things worth mentioning for this part of the application. When it comes to resources, these are the field trips, the use of the media center in the school or the public library or the internet or contributions and loans from parents or institutions or guest speakers. These are all of those things that enhance your application or enhance your project. Who are the stakeholders who can help with your project when it comes to the resources? These can be other teachers, staff members, parents, volunteers, community members and partners, community businesses and programs. And what can these stakeholders assist you with? They can help with field trips. They can help with virtual field trips. They can help with tours, media center access, public library access, internet sites. Parents can contribute to the classroom project. Uh, community and businesses can contribute as well. And of course, parents and business members and community members can serve as guest speakers. Consider this part of the scoring rubric that relates to project innovation. Is your project an idea that other teachers will want to adapt? Is it an idea not widely in use already or if it is in use, then will this project improve other teachers' implementation? For example, if they are already using Legos, is this a better way to use Legos? So consider this when you are developing the section of your application. Feel free to write down some points related to project innovation here and the resources and materials that are part of your grant that will help enhance the experience of the project. Now we will take a look at the overall value in the curriculum idea profile section. For the overall value, here you're going to write a few sentences to sell your project. You're going to describe the project's best features, the innovative aspects of the project and the contributions to student achievement that are cognitive contributions and effective contributions. Here you're going to explain why teachers would want to adapt your project for their classes. Here are some questions to consider for the overall value section of your application. When it comes to student achievement, 
think about whether or not the activities in your project challenges the students and motivates the students and how does it do that? When it comes to creativity and innovation, think about why another teacher would want to adapt your project. What makes your project innovative and what makes it stand out from the others? When it comes to meeting a special need, does the project address a critical area, a critical need in your curriculum? Does the project fulfill special areas of interest or innovation? So consider these things when writing the value section of your application. Here are some tips from the Education Fund Grant Committee. They would like you to describe how the project is totally new, is a variation on similar ideas, or is adjusted to a new age group. They would like you to describe how the project requires hands-on learning and creativity by the students. Here are some recommendations for innovation. Think about if the project motivates students in a new way through hands-on and real-life experiences. Does the project's activities challenge students to use 21st century skills and higher order thinking? Does the project offer an improved way to do or learn something? Does the project have a lively and enriching take on traditional curriculum? Don't forget that you should try to incorporate those rhetorical appeals as you are writing your grant application. Your grant is being compared to other projects and your comparison to other projects will be determined by how you sell your project. So use those rhetorical appeals when you write. The overall value slash assessment section of the scoring rubric asks the following questions. Is your project an instructional learning experience that motivates and challenges students to learn? Is the project creative? And does the project meet a special need? At this time, you may pause the next slide to read the example of the overall value. The Education Fund has added some new requirements for the disseminator application. Let's take a look at what they are. This part of your application asks that you list five things teachers will learn in your expo workshop about how to teach your ideas to their students. So consider these workshop expectations when answering that question. What five things will your participants learn or take away? How will this information be presented to them? How are you going to share it with them? How will this information help or guide them in adapting the project easily? And how will this information help or guide them in teaching it to their students? Disseminators must include a 200 word summary of their project that describes what the teachers will learn, how the teachers will be instructed, and what the students will learn during the project. Go to the Education Fund, click on What We Do, click on Publications, then you will select Ideas with Impact Catalogs. From there, you can explore the various ideas with impact catalogs to see those 200 word descriptions of projects that have been written over the years that will help guide you in writing yours a final section of the scoring rubric asks about comparison to other projects submitted how does your project compare to other projects submitted in the same curriculum area now that we've talked about the content and curriculum side of the disseminator application, we will look at the photographs requirement. You are asked to upload a color photograph suitable for reproduction that projects a visual statement of your project. Ideal images include a close up photo of one to two students working on a project, smiling and looking at the camera. Multiple images may be uploaded. You're also required to submit a headshot. If your project is selected, your project will be featured in the Ideas with Impact catalog. So they are asking that you upload a high quality, high res photo, photo of yourself, which you may have seen when you looked at the Ideas with Impact catalog from the previous slides. 
and previous years. So remember that the high resolution digital photos that you're submitting as part of your application will be used for reproduction. You do need a headshot and you do need a color project photo photograph. Please consider having these things with your uh, photographs, a media release for your students, which they should sign because the district and school may provide their own action shots of students, photos that are close up of students and that have a visual statement. And you'll upload these photos with your application. Here are some examples of photos that are close up with one to two students engaged in the activities for the project. Here are examples of action shots of students engaged in project activities. And in these shots, there may be multiple students, more than one or two. The scoring rubric for the grant application simply asks, was a photograph included? Just a reminder, go to Education Fund, click on what we do, click on publications. And then from there, you can click scroll and then click on ideas with impact catalogs to see examples of photos and headshots from the various idea catalogs that have been published. At this time, we will review the rubric that will be used to score your project and a couple reminders. There will be special categories for which applications will be accepted and those categories are STEM and STEAM projects, Holocaust studies, robotics, financial literacy, and civics. There might be more applications accepted for these special categories than others. Additionally, you'll receive a scoring rubric bonus for curriculum areas if your project is one of the special funding categories, whether it's Holocaust, robotics, STEAM, STEM, financial literacy, art. In this presentation, you've seen the rubric broken up into different topics, but here is a view of the entire rubric that's on a scale of four to zero, four being outstanding, zero being no merit. Feel free to pause on this slide so you can review the rubric and the criterion that will be used to score your project. As a reminder, the applications must be received or submitted by Monday, May 4th, 2020. In this section, you can view winning proposals that can serve as a guide as you develop your application. Just go to the link provided on the Ideas with Impact section of the website to click to find those winning proposals. As you look at the winning proposals, consider the following questions as you reflect. Does a project meet a specific need and which ones? What impact does the grant have on the students? Does the project have on the students? Are students motivated and challenged during the learning activities? And do the learning activities provide a lively and enriching take on the traditional curriculum? And do the learning activities include hands-on experiences such as simulations and real-life situations? How were students how are the students' activities described? Are they well-planned, specific, and realistic? And do the objectives and what is being evaluated match? Are the activities measurable? And is the budget feasible? Are the asks reasonable and practical? How so? These questions can always also be used as you are developing your own application. Now we will talk about some of the requirements if you are selected as a disseminator. The first one is the idea packet. As a disseminator, you'll be asked to complete an idea packet, which will include lessons, material list, information, advice, anything that you found that is necessary and shareable for the project that the teachers can use to adapt it successfully. The curriculum packet that you create should be at least 15 pages. It must be typed and it must be in good reproduction quality. Find examples of the education curriculum packets by going to what we do on the site, clicking publications on the site. And then when you scroll, you're going to select the option for curriculum packets. And there you can see lots of examples.
Your next requirement, if selected as a disseminator, is creating a visual display. The purpose of the display is to promote the project. It's recommended that you use a science board for your display because it will sit on a six foot table and there will also be prizes for best display. The next few slides show you examples of what those displays look like at various expos. If selected as a disseminator, you will also have to create a workshop presentation for the expo. The total time for your workshop presentation is 50 minutes. Workshop presentations should be interactive. The participants in your presentation should be engaged and excited about what they're learning. Workshop presentations can also be hands-on. In closing, we would like to thank you for watching this webinar to learn more about the disseminator stipend. If you have questions regarding the Disseminator Stipend or the Impact2 program, reach out to Audrey, the Education Fund Program Director. Her email address and phone number is listed on the screen. Again, thank you for joining us to learn more about the Disseminator proposal.